And with that, I give the floor to Laura, who has been in her pocket, in her bag, in her delusional era, like especially very strongly lately. Mm -hmm. So if she doesn't get this out of her system today, I think she might implode. I will implode. <laughs> <laughs> This is MIA2K Podcast, and we are your ticket from Miami to Seoul. We are your pilots, Kathy and Laura, two fun-seeking girls with obsessive fandom tendencies taking you on a ride through the Hallyu wave from our perspective as opinionated, grown Latina fans from Miami. Before we close the cabin doors, make sure you're following us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And if you like to watch, our in-flight podcast video is available on YouTube and Spotify. Once we reach our cruising altitude, we'll be serving one thing and one thing only, piping hot tea. We're ready to fly into today's topic with our hot and sunny takes. So fasten your seatbelt, sit back, relax, and prepare for takeoff. Hi, guys. Hey, hey. Today's episode is going to be very musically inclined, but we will not be playing songs because the copyright gods don't allow such things for podcast mortals like ourselves. So sorry about it. Regardless, we'll have a lot of fun with this one. So let's get to it. <laughs> Before we start, we do have some brief announcements we want to share with you. Our merch store has officially been open for just over a month. So we wanted to say thank you so much for all the support thus far. It's been incredible. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And in case you haven't checked it out, the limited edition run items, which include the You're Beautiful. <laughs> Sorry for the pun, but not really. It's cute. The You're Beautiful tote and the Zombie Finger Heart t-shirt will be available until November 15th. We will also be adding more cities to our Hangul City Shirt collection with the next drop. So if you want your city to be included, send us a DM at MIA, the number two, K-pop shop on Instagram. And finally, check us out on Coffee. We're posting some behind the scenes stuff there and just some cute little things, some cute yeah. updates too that you won't find anywhere else. You can find the link in our link tree in our bio from any of our social media accounts, which are at MIA, the number two K podcast. Okay. So with that out of the way, let's jump into today's episode and enjoy some music musings. So let's start with K-pop's newest It Boys, Even. Yes. So Even came out of nowhere kind of for me because like I was scrolling through Instagram and then this song was like inside me all of a sudden and I was like I need this what is this who is this and I was like wow mind blown so if you guys were paying attention to social media or Korean TV in spring of 2023 y'all heard of a show called Boys Planet so Boys Planet was a TV show where 98 contestants competed to be a part of a global K-pop group for boys, obviously. The show premiered on February 2nd, 2023, and the finale aired on April 20th. Nine members were chosen to become part of the group that they form, which is called Zero Base One. So Zero Base One is, you know, off taking every single record there is. They're, you know, rookies yeah. of the year, all the things. But because there were 98 people in total on the show, obviously, crazy. it's insane. There is potential for more groups and more things to spin off. So of course they have. So on August 3rd of this year, it was officially confirmed that Boys Planet contestants Park Hanbin, Lee Jonghyun, Moon Junghyun, Park Jihoo, Ji Yunso, Yu Sunghon, and Keita would be debuting in a project boy group named Blit. I think it's Blit because I thought it could be <laughs> Blit, but the Hangul says Blit, which stands for boldly leaping into tomorrow. <laughs> And then somebody, I, okay, so I looked into this on Reddit and on Twitter because I kind of, again, I missed everything. Like, all I saw was the debut of Even, and I missed everything that happened in between. So what had happened was, according to Reddit, is that somebody on Twitter, once they announced the group name was Blit, was like, oh, I'm so excited about my boy clip. And so, <laughs> and so the company, which is Jellyfish Entertainment, was like, okay. We cannot allow this group to have 
negative connotation or something like, you know, bad assigned to it or associated with it. So we're going to change the name. <laughs> so on August 9th, it was announced uh, that the group was now going to be called Even, which stands for Evening's Newest Etoiles. And Etoiles <laughs> is star in French. So I don't know what the fuck they're trying to do with these naming <laughs> conventions these days with K-pop groups. I can't. But, you know, to me, it's corny, the acronym, but I will, I'll stick to even, even is fine. I'll take it. It is what it is. And again, they're managed by Jellyfish Entertainment. So Keita was one of the uh, Boys Planet contestants. There were a lot of contestants that were already previously in groups. Like these are not necessarily all kids that are brand new to the scene. Like there was a lot of existing idols competing in the, in the show. Keita is part of the, of Rain's company, the, and he in that company was in a seven member group called Cypher, which debuted in March of 2021. They have released three EPs since then that have basically gone nowhere because K-pop is such a competitive environment where like their stuff didn't really like do a, a blip. So because of that, four of the members actually left Cypher in August of this year. And the three that remain were Keita, Hui, and Hyunbin. And Hyunbin also competed on fantasy boys is that what the other show was called yeah 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 yeah. so you know they're they're really trying to put their name out there and to do something with themselves but anyway so the four that left are out these three are still part of cypher they're currently promoting individually Mm. but the agency said that they will come back as a whole after a makeover so god knows what rain is going to try to do to keep him around but in the meantime he put Keita in even Mm -hmm. so and Keita is it's funny enough this is like just cute for me Keita is a magnet of cypher but he's a leader of even so how old are these kids Keita is is 01 and then the next one's 02 so like they're very young they're very young and then I have to mention this because of course my hubby is involved so I you know must speak about this so uh after boys planet well during boys planet one of the mentors was ph1 harry and Harry took a liking to Keita. Like, it was just very obvious that Harry basically thought that, like, the only rapper worth his salt in the entire show was Keita. It was, like, light as day. So on July 5th, they actually released a song together called Metronome, which is a bop. It if I is a myself. bop. It's I very catchy. It mm-hmm. It's really good. It was a total summer bop. They had this, like, uh, video shoot at like the Han River on like a boat, mm-hmm. you know, it was, it was giving like all the right vibes. Yeah. So Keita had that opportunity to have a collab with PH1, which I think was awesome. And I hope that they're still in touch and they're going to like drop music again in the future, even though they're like two rappers. So it's like a lot of that kind of same energy, but they really do um, sound really good together. So anyway, now all of that story and everything else that I had mentioned said the song that brought us all here, and again, that I was like, the minute that I saw it on Instagram, I was like, what is this? It's called Trouble. So the EP that even released is called Target Me. While you're looking at that, Harry's favoritism probably played a big part on not having a lot of screen time. <laughs> he also was out of town a lot. So I mean, that well, yeah. definitely like his schedule didn't allow him to be present for so much of the show. But again, you know, a lot of these kids are trying out to be idols and singers and dancers and stuff, things yeah. which Harry does not have any sort of expertise with. That's so true. he only could contribute good insights with the rapping stuff. And half of the kids were terrible rappers. So he was like, right. mm-hmm. I don't know. So, yeah. So the EP is called Target colon me. And then mm-hmm. it has six songs. I've Thick listened- song? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's pretty good for a group that came out of nowhere. And also, it's a project team. So none- this is not a set group forever. Like, this is basically temporary while mm. they have t- time and the rest of them figure out other things to do. But I listened to the whole thing. Some songs have, like, NCT vibes. Some songs have, like, Monster X vibes. Mm. I think uh, they don't have a super distinct sound in general. Other than like with Trouble, Trouble is pretty specific, but the rest of the songs kind of go all over the place. They have some slower tunes, so it's not just like, you know, they they really try to kind of show different colors all throughout the album. And I think it's a pretty well made and put together little EP. And again, they came for me out of nowhere because of, you know, Instagram and social media. They debuted September 19th, which was like, I think that song came out on like a Monday which is super random also in K-pop. 
because usually like you know songs kind of drop on the weekends or closer to the weekend but yeah the song dropped and then the minute that I like heard it because it's like it it just kind of catches you and then I saw the choreo and they do like the guara guara and I was like oh my god who are these kids and then and then I was like really impressed because they were working with a lot of you know when you're doing the challenges and stuff Mm -hmm. they were working with a lot of groups but usually like nugu groups that are new don't get airtime with literally any groups yet they were getting all the airtime and that's when I was like wait who are these kids and then I saw Keita and I was like oh okay these are the boys planet like people's so they had already some sort of street cred and that's why people were like okay with like doing challenges with them because there's plenty of groups that are doing all the challenges by themselves and nobody will do with them because they're too new and nobody cares anyway and they don't have a big company behind them correct yeah so I guess jellyfish is doing things right here and yeah I really like trouble I think you should absolutely listen to it. It's a huge bop. It's weirdish for like end of summer because it's like we're already entering fall. So like it's not necessarily yeah. like the season for it. That. But I think, you know, if you're in the mood, if you're working out, if you're going for a run or if you're driving, it's going to be an amazing song to play. So that was that. The one thing I did want to note is that the I'm sad that the group is not going to be named Blit because i missed <laughs> out on the chance of being in a fandom called blitches <laughs> i'm just kidding that's from reddit and then also just worth noting because we're talking about music jay chong which is another fan favorite from boys planet that could have potentially made the group because he was a fan favorite but rigor morris everywhere uh, <laughs> he just dropped a single called mm-hmm. rockstar and Laura and I were talking about it. I, I think the song is okay. Is you know, there's nothing super impressive about it. It's a good song. Mm-hmm. It's cute. The music video, I didn't understand I the like choices for like budget investment. I think that they went in all the wrong ways for this. Like I think Jay was trying to stand out with having some sort of like storytelling involved in the video, but mm-hmm. I think it was just it's not necessarily like what you want to come out with and when you want to debut with like a, a long strong intro with like yeah boring stuff basically and i i like that comedian the australian comedian i like him he's cool it's just like the whole setup and everything was kind of eh. so i think they should have invested their money differently but with that said if you want to support jay chong go for it and for someone like me who didn't even know who that guy was it was like the fuck is this <laughs> I literally just skipped it and tried to get to the song, and the song was okay. I mean, I think they should have picked the English version as, like, the main track or, like, the title instead of the one with Korean. Because I feel like most of his fan base is international. But, you know, also, (laughs) I just looked it up while you were talking about Jay Chang. And the company behind Zero Base One, which is Wake One, uh-huh. And the company behind even Jellyfish uh-huh. are both technically under C J E and M. Why is C J E and M behind everything and everyone? They have so much money. Oh my so god. So that's why they have had such a strong backing because they have a strong company. I mean, it makes sense because everything <laughs> that they do has like a base in, in uh TV. So mm-hmm. it makes complete sense. Wow. Wow. Of course. Yeah. So it's all kind of in the house. Everyone is making money for the same person here. Pretty much. Basically. Wow. Pretty much. Look at you, CJ. We need to do an episode on CJ and I'm I'm over it. (laughs) Honestly. I'm over it. Because that's not a name that anyone talks about. And yet, they have their sticky little fingers everywhere. If the CEO needs to adopt a 32-year-old daughter, (laughs) I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) Just, you know, just yeah. throwing that out there. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's that on Even. So I hope you guys enjoy listening to their music. I do think that their EP is cool. So give it a listen. And with that, I give the floor to Laura, who has been in her pocket, in her bag, in her delusional era, like especially very strongly yeah. lately. So if she doesn't get this out of her system today, I think she might implode. I will implode. (laughs) 
I will. So here's the thing. <laughs> I I guess I we've been into K-pop for enough time that we've seen a lot of groups debut. But for me particularly, none of them have really caught my eye from the very, very beginning. I don't think I've ever felt like a super big connection with any of them that I've seen like be born <laughs> until until boy next door oh <laughs> here's the thing guys they're so good so for those of you that don't know they debuted on may 30th of this year with their single album who with an exclamation point oh so cute <laughs> it included three songs but i like you serenade and one and only and what actually really got me into them Kathy and I follow Hybe because it's Hybe. <laughs> you cannot not follow Hybe. Literally. So we had seen like the teasers or like the promotions for Boy Next Door before they debuted. But what really caught my eye was when I listened to their song Serenade and they have the cutest ending of a song that I've heard this year, which I, I can't remember it now because I'm too I'll excited. Get a, I'll get along with your dad for you. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> I talked about this a lot. She I did. Just, she made so it a cute. real. She made it a meme. Like she, it was like it really captured her. And I'm here for her journey. I'm not on it with her, but I'm no, supporting her. No, but so cute. So that that's what captured me. And then once I got captured, that was the end. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> I had six. I had six sons. Like so, they have six members. Um, their names are and I'm sorry if I mispronounce them it is what it is <laughs> I'll try better I'll do better it's Liwoo Jaehyun Taesan Ihan Wonak and Song Ho Jaehyun is the leader and that's the only position that is like called out by them and like their company like it doesn't Every have like a rapper vocalist no visual like okay just leader mm -hmm. they have themselves created like a little bit of a niche for themselves which I, it's part of the whole debut process right like that's how they get trained but yeah. nothing is official except for like the position of leader okay they're under koz or cause entertainment which is headed by zico mm -hmm. and cause is under hype so not only they they just debut but they also had their first comeback <laughs> so cute september 4th which is like a month ago, a little bit over a month ago, it included the first, well, the three songs that I mentioned before, plus Crying, But Sometimes, and ABCD Love. It's actually ABCD L-O-V-E, but whatever. It's so cute. <laughs> Basically, their whole thing or their whole shtick is that they're bringing music and lyrics that will resonate with everyone, and they'll be the boy next door. <laughs> Dying. They're so cute. <laughs> Uh, they're currently in two dorms so each not the dorm details oh, oh hell yeah it's getting like that because it's oh, important man. it's important okay so, so i mean i guess because now we're seeing groups debut with like big companies they don't have the struggles that like a lot of the third gen or second gen groups had to deal with but they're split into two floors with just three members each they don't really have a very cramped like area right they showed their dorms in like little videos when they're trying to like introduce everyone yeah and it was I, I mean I thought it was interesting I don't know if it's you know because they are under hype so there is a lot more money or because they're under Zico who is or was a boy group member and he knows how the struggle is and just kind of wanted to put them in the best foot possible moving forward. But I just thought that was interesting. Okay. So I'll, I'll accept it. And thank you. <laughs> Musically, they're very like Zico, but Zico, like Summer Rain or any song, and not like his like super heavy rap, like Soul Drift or like Bermuda Triangle. They're more in like Zico's popular era or like mm. pop era where he's just trying to get everybody to listen to his music mm. they don't seem to have a very strong vocalist it's like if you listen to their songs there is singing of course but it's not like you're not getting bacon or dk type of like runs you know what i mean 
Right. There isn't anybody like that. I've only seen Sung Ho and Lee Woo like actually show a little bit of what they can do, but it's not like anything super impressive. I don't know if if it's just because they debuted and they're still kind of like learning or if just that's their style and I I don't know anything and I I haven't been paying attention to them to the extent that you have but if I have to guess I think probably Jiko was just not looking for that like he wasn't looking for this like great vocalist (laughs) because as we know sometimes when you have a really 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 wonderful vocalist he doesn't really Mm -hmm. fit into the group and (laughs) maybe there's like a, a little bit of like he didn't want that friction and he didn't want the members to have any sort of like discrepancy or just too much you know of of a rift between them because of having a really good vocalist and he just didn't find one that was like cool and vocal and like rap and had the vibe that he wanted could be something that that that. makes a lot of sense actually because part of like their whole vibe with their songs is like super fun their choreographies aren't like insane they're they're just fun like I don't know how to explain it but sometimes when you look at a choreography you're like oh my god that looks like so much fun Mm -hmm. I can't dance but sometimes when I look at a choreography I think of it as fun and not as like wow impressive like Kang Daniel had a song where the choreography just looked like it was friends dancing Um, and it's that kind of vibe if you guys like him you'll know which song I'm talking about. I was obsessed with it and now I can't remember (laughs) the stupid song. Upside Down, Upside Down. It it has that vibe. So I think what you're saying is true. Like you can't be vibey and like dancing and jumping up and down while still hitting like Jongho type of like. Yeah, maybe he just didn't want that. That's not what he wanted for the group. Yeah, and and makes sense. he He didn't look for that, yeah. Out of the six songs that they've come out with, four of them, have been written with the help or by the members so it's been only Tessan, Wonak and Jaehyun they have had writing credits in four of the six songs which I think it's pretty impressive because they just debuted Mm -hmm. from what I understand that's kind of like they're also one of the things that Zico was trying to emphasize them creating their own music and producing their own music Mm -hmm. Um, so it's cute and those three that I mentioned also seem to be the stronger rappers um, of the group. Like the other three rap, but like it's not like, you know, I I don't believe it as much. Right. Yeah, yeah, I got you. And then there's one Lee Wu is who appears to be the main dancer because he calls himself the main dancer and he's always <laughs> dancing. <laughs> From the TikToks that you have sent me, I can confirm that it seems like that's the vibe. And so I think it's going to be super interesting to see them grow and to see what cause or KOZ allows them to do musically. If maybe after like a couple of releases, they're going to have even more control of what their music sounds like because of Zico, right? So I just think it's it's going to be really interesting. And one last thing which I thought was super unfair but before they debuted people were calling them boy jeans and they were expecting them to be just as like impressive and like earth shattering as new jeans which is like unfair because honestly no one will ever do what new jeans and adore did and like nobody it's it's one in a lifetime kind of like bts and what they've done right like even like le seraphim debuted maybe what two three months before new jeans from the same company like overall and it's it's didn't do the same so i don't know what people would expect craziness like that right it's so sad it's it's not sad it's fucking rude (laughs) (laughs) but anyway i have six sons they're very cute i do have favorites I won't say it. Yes, I will. No, I won't. You'll find <laughs> out if you if you follow our if you follow our accounts, our social media accounts, you'll find out because I'm obviously unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they're just. I've watched so much content. It's a little sad, but also not. It's not sad. They're so cute. I like cute things, and they're just the cutest things in the world. Oh, 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 oh! And one last thing before I recommend the song. Daehyun used to be a YG trainee. And when he debuted, Bobby actually posted like a story that was like, hey, congratulations. I remember. So cute, but also talent. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. So the song that I recommend would be ABCDLOVE. 
just because that's the last song that they created like visuals for mm. and it's a video it's a music video that's recorded vertically mm. so it, it, it fits their vibes it's like dripping in cuteness like <laughs> it's just adorable and the song is really good so you should check it out they went right for your throat they really did i love them <laughs> uh, so cute so going right over from the cuteness attack that laura just went through and put us all through let's talk about what's going on musically with it's not really like an up-and-coming label at this point because <laughs> everyone in it is like heavily established but yeah. i guess more vision is starting to get some steam and so we're going to talk specifically about Chongha and Jesse because there there is stuff happening there. We have gotten recent news, so we just want to cover what's going on in the musical world there. So Jesse joined More Vision in April of 2023. She left P Nation in, on July of 2022. She when she left P Nation, she was kind of like, you know, no bad blood with Sayopa. Everything is good. I'm just going to do my own thing. And she went on this like tour specifically through Europe. And then she would go live constantly through her tour in like complete desperation of like her car pickup never showed up. The venues that she was performing at were kicking her out because she was like performing for too long or longer than what had been agreed upon. And the whole thing, like the whole experience was a mess. At the mm -hmm. same time, she was trying to come out with her makeup line, which is called Unni, I believe. And all these things were supposed to be happening for her, but it all kind of like flopped and flatlined. And she would probably have like a come to Jesus moment where she was like, doing this on my own is a little bit too fucking much right now. So I guess she and Jay Park had been talking for years before about potentially working together in some capacity. And she decided to join more vision and let the label kind of take care of the logistics so that she could focus on the music and the other things that she wants to do. So just this week, she actually announced that she was opening up her website, which is jessieofficial.com. And Jessie is spelled J-E-S-S-I. -S -S so if you want to go check it out. And interestingly, it's powered by the same company that created AT's new fan platform, which is Be My Friend. And then we also just found out this week that she is making her first comeback under More Vision with a song called Gum. And I'm personally very much looking forward to it. Me the too. last song that we got from her with P Nation was Zoom, which was a total hit on TikTok. I think she wrote that song in literally five minutes. And sometimes that's when things really take off. So mm -hmm. if you want to get to know Jesse's music a little bit more, you should definitely listen to Nunu Nana, which is a song that kind of broke her out. After years of being in the industry, we could do a whole episode on just like Jesse's yeah. entire career, trials, tribulations. And like, I think she was in the industry for about 15 years before she actually made a splash with Nunu Nana. So definitely check out Nunu Nana. And Zoom was her latest work and look forward to Gum coming out on October 25th. Yay, I'm excited. Me too. Also, I wonder if that company, Be My Friend, is like going to get everyone who refuses to join. This is a new like, CJ and I'm like... <laughs> honestly, I think they are backed by by them. Probably. I don't, I, I I don't even we remember. Did... I remember we looked at the research, but it feels like it's been ages. So Sorry. we did so much research about too many companies. And so now we can't remember anything, which I think <laughs> is best for our brains. But mm -hmm. yeah, no, I, I do feel like everyone, like you're saying, that is not associated with Weavers or whatever is going to go with someone like Be My Friend so mm -hmm. that they can get their white label service. Okay, so with Chongha, actually, she left MNH Entertainment back in April of this year, 2023, when her seven-year contract expired. So she had been with them for a very long time. She had released Bear and Rare Part 1 in 2022, and she said that she had Bear Rare Part 2 scheduled to release after. But when she left MN8, it was kind of shell. She wrote a letter to her fans and it appears that if you read between the lines, obviously, it appears like it wasn't her decision. And because she left M and in H, there will never be like a Bear Rare Part 2. Right. There might be like 
an album that has the same songs or the same idea, but not like. Yeah, she probably doesn't have the rights to the master, so she can't release it. Right. She also said that her social media channels were not managed by her. So she wasn't sure if she was going to be able to continue using them. She wasn't. <laughs> and honestly, it's such a dick move, bro. Right? To us, it just sounds like pettiness from a company losing its biggest star. But like, it's just like, what are they going to do with the social media channels? Like, they're not going to just continue posting because she's not part of their company anymore so like what does it do to you nothing nothing like jyp kept got seven channel and it's just there like it's not like they removed all the content and sold it and whatever like it's just sitting there gathering dust and they really should let the artists keep their freaking social media like it's so 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 stupid so stupid so with that chung hao was revealed as more vision's newest artist on wednesday october 11th and she also opened a new IG account, which is add more Chongha, please. But please is PLZ. I love that name. Because she's cool. Because she's so fucking cool. She really is. <laughs> I love her. She really, really is. We're really excited to see what she has in store for us oh, yeah. with more vision. Because I feel like you can say whatever you want about Jay Park, but he lets his artists have freedom over their creativeness. And they thrive. They thrive. Yeah. So you know what? I'm excited. Yeah. We got to see Chungha last year during Head in the Clouds. And she's so fucking cute. Like, she's so talented. I was watching a TikTok not too long ago about somebody who was talking about idols that can really do it all. And they were Mm -hmm. like, Chungha is that bitch. Like, you don't understand, like, the discography, the dancing, the rapping, the singing. Well, maybe not the rapping, but whatever. They were talking about just, like, all the things that she can do. I'm sure she can rap, too, if she really wanted to. I don't know. But, yeah, she's just, we really, like, seeing her on stage, it just makes you feel, like, bubbly inside. I don't know how to explain it. And I'm not a bubbly bitch, but, like, it just, like, it's contagious, her her voice and the way she talks and how she addresses the fans and she like stopped her set to sign someone's album like she's the most adorable human being on the entire face of the earth she's very cute and if you want to check out Chongha's music prior to signing with more vision you can listen to sparkling which is just how it sounds sparkling like it's it's like too cute for school for the world yeah and if you want like a little bit more of like a harder vibe dream of you which is all in english (laughs) and yeah she's a really good english speaker too so you know that's also something i think it was texas i feels texas yes (laughs) yes because i think she was talking to young g about texas Uh, yeah makes sense it feels texas it feels i don't know but anyway let's support her let's get her lots of followership on her social media because she has worked so hard and fuck mnh just you know throwing it out there because why just why honestly like why? Ugh. it's such a petty move stoop and well from talking about these lovely ladies and seeing how mm-hmm. they're about to take over the world with more vision we have one last musical act that we want to talk about and for a very special reason and that is the rose Hey. so the rose is a South Korean indie rock band under the company Windfall and partner up with Transparent Arts. Don't know those people, but wish them all the best. (laughs) (laughs) The band is composed of four members, (laughs) Kim Woo-sung, Park Do-jung, Lee Ha-jung, and E J Hyung, and they do you know all their own it's a band that plays their own instruments so vocals guitar keyboard drums and bass all included by these four wonderful artists I read a little bit about how they came together and basically three of them would like busk and Hongdae and like that's how they kind of try to get their music career started and then they found Busong at the end and then they became the Rose and they went to the company and here they are They are amazing and they have the perfect combination of like emo, but like not too emo Mm. with like rock that is palatable and mainstream, you know, Mm. is that vibe. So the, they have amazing songs. Usong also has drop music on his own that I think is freaking amazing. So I'm a really, really big fan of his work as an artist. And the reason we're talking about them today is because... For some miracle of God, the Rose and their company decided that on their tour, their dawn to dusk tour that they're embarking on right now, that they have started, 
they wanted to stop in Miami. This Why? does not happen. Oh, we're thankful. We, I, I remember that <laughs> I saw the tour poster and I didn't even <laughs> check the cities because I was like, why bother? It's not like I'm going to be able to go anyway, because I figured they were going to take, you know, the stage in the usual cities and states that we know, New York, Atlanta, California, Seattle, Chicago, et cetera. So I didn't even see it. And then people start blowing up my phone and they're like, the rose is coming to Miami. And I'm like, wait, what? Like literally like record scratch. What? What did you say? And then I look, what did you say? (laughs) and then I looked at the freaking poster and I I think I still can't believe it like I think I still can't believe it so the Rosa is coming to Miami on Halloween on October 31st which is a Tuesday so Miami actually Florida if you're in Jacksonville you can come down you can drive down here if you're in Orlando you can drive down here I know it's the week and it's like Halloween And I know that it's hard to take off of work and stuff, but we've done it. We've gone up to Orlando. We, if we can do it, y'all can do it too. But the Rose did not make the effort or the decision to come to Miami for us to not sell enough seats in that venue. We stay complaining that nobody comes to Miami and that K-pop does not have a market here in Miami. We did a whole episode begging artists and companies to please bring their artists to <laughs> <Literally>. Miami <laughs> and we cannot sit here and struggle to sell tickets to concert of the rose who not only are amazing and diverse and funny and fucking wonderful but they also have a lot of songs in English so it's like an even better palatable mm-hmm. group to like introduce people to so I beg you Miami tell your aunt tell your ex tell your boss tell everyone in your family that the rose is coming to Miami and this is a very meaningful moment for all of us in South Florida and we can't fail them because if we fail them no one else is going to want to give Florida a chance please please not even coming to fucking revolution life oh my god they're going to a place with AC guys and seats and see and seats if you want to be in a seat there's seats if you want to be on the floor well the floor is sold out <laughs> <laughs> but if you wanted to be on the floor you could have been on the floor like they gave us options they really did they have a beautiful light stick like they're letting us use it in real life like are you guys kidding me like yeah And like, if you are a K-pop girly who like maybe has wanted to involve your significant other in K-pop, but haven't been able to do so yet, Laura is bringing her husband to the concert. Our friend Alex, who is also sitting with us, is also bringing her husband to the concert. We're all dressing up because it's Halloween. So like the vibes are right. Like if like, again, if you really have wanted to like just show your significant other like, hey, there's this K-pop thing and they look at you like crazy because it's all these boys wearing makeup and all these girls that look like anime people and the, you know, the 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 lip syncing and whatever they don't like about K-pop. Fine. The rose is not that. The yeah. rose is authentic, organic amazingness they did Lollapalooza this year which was amazing they went and they did a private set right after and I think Song did not even have a fucking voice and somehow that man still sang on stage like a beautiful cherub angel of the skies they did Lollapalooza in Chicago and in Chile there you go they are like the best like Song has again the best sense of humor they do so much good fan service during the show they interact with the fans they joke around like it's a good ass time so i'm on my knees metaphorically figuratively and i will do it literally if i must please 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 come to the rose on halloween bring people if you're Mm -hmm. like but my kid wants to go trick-or-treating bitch halloween happens every year it's true. The rose also, nobody the needs all that much sugar. Go to the not freaking kids. concert. Not, not kids. kids. Mm-hmm. Not kids, not adults. Sugar is terrible for all of us. So, I don't know. I, I really, really, like, there's a lot of seats left, and my heart hurts. And I don't want the rose to perform to, like, 
a mediocre like the crowd is not gonna be bad because I think the crowd is gonna be lit regardless yeah. of how many of us there are but Miami's I just always lit yeah but I just wish that we could fill this the the venue as much as possible yeah which I think is about probably 60 percent of tickets sold at this point I mean the, yeah it's a lot and James L. Knight Center is so small that mm-hmm. unless you have an obstructed view you're going to see the band well yeah. We went to see Espa in August, was it? Yeah. Or September? Yeah, August. And we were like in the 200 section, but they were very close. Like, yeah. it was a good ass time. It was such a good ass time. And you can like park nearby and you can go have, um, what's it called? At the lobby of the, is it the Hyatt? They yes. have They have like connected tunnels. So you don't even have to walk in the heat. Mm-hmm. They have connected tunnels between the hotels and everything nearby. You can go to like the lobby hotel bar and stuff and you can have they have like ten dollar margaritas on Tuesdays and they have and they have these really good tacos. So like, girl, the experience is there. Just Mm -hmm. take it. Just take it. And if you need a little bit of help, we will be giving a little bit of insight on where to park, all that kind of stuff right before the concert in our story so you're not going to be alone yeah. you're not going to be like a headless chicken yeah it's literally perfect yeah and if your significant other or whoever is like ill k-pop they're not even k-pop they're so not really <laughs> they're not no k-pop. these they're not k-pop they're just emo we t- <laughs> <laughs> we just like pile them and even they let themselves be piled with k-pop just because it makes money (laughs) it makes money and that's just the easiest way to like even even ph1 like sometimes gets called k-pop and he's like i mean if you're gonna feature me in a magazine sure so Mm -hmm. you know it's just it's just what makes sense but they're not k-pop they are i don't know laura you know more bands than i do in like the rock world like what bands do they kind of sound like that people can like if you're a 2000s if you're a millennial 2000s emo this is your shit like this is it this is literally like every single band that you can think of it's that it's a little bit of the killers a little bit of panic at the disco a little bit of like the more chill ones that I can't think of right now because I'm on the spot (laughs) but it's all of those like it's it's just it's just good like Ryan my husband was explaining to his friends who are like not even 2000s emo they're just emo right now yeah And he was explaining to them that I'm taking him to the concert, but he's like, yeah, but like, I've listened to their songs and it's pretty cool. Like, you know, it's what we listen to. And I'm like, hell yeah, that's it, Ryan. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I'm excited and you should be excited and we should all go and have a great time. And also, let me just like give you like a little bit of tiny insight into Wuzong's like bright, like brilliant mind perfection of a human that he is. So when he wrote for his last solo album, I believe, he was giving an explanation and it's about like moths and how like when you see a butterfly, it's like a beautiful thing. And like, you know, there's people that don't like butterflies and are scared of them, but that's besides the point. Butterflies are beautiful and they, you know, you see them in the day and like the colorfulness and everything is cute. But when you hear and you see of a moth, you're like, ew, like it's ugly or whatever. But then like you see them the most at night. And when you see them at night and the light shines through them, you can see the beautiful patterns of their wings. So his has this whole like metaphor about how like, if you just stand in the right light, you are beautiful. Like regardless of how people view you or how you view yourself or what like label is assigned to you, we're all beautiful. And we just need the right light to shine on us. Like, oh my how, God, that's gorgeous. How can you not immediately go to AXS.com and buy a <laughs> ticket to this fucking concert? my god anyway i think we have made our case enough at this point please tell people to come see the rose and spend halloween all of us together at the james all night center with outfits and drinks in hand and please just for the love of god like let us not have an empty venue for Mm. the rose they deserve better please they really do so with that our song recommendation for the rose is alive for me. I 
don't know what to recommend. <laughs> okay. I'm really emo when I get emo. <laughs> so I would say She's in the Rain really got me. So I think that one or also Beauty and the Beast. For some reason, that song really hits for me. So, but if you are just like, let me get a taste of everything just go to our social media and in the link tree you'll see a link to our spotify account and we have a playlist for their concert set list you can also find it under our highlights in our instagram account which is at mia the number two k podcast so we have the set list there for the whole concert the set list is fucking stacked like mm. from this mm -hmm. album, previous albums, they're all like all the hits are there. So it's it seems like it's going to be an amazing concert. So, yeah, definitely listen to those songs to prepare and just go check out the concert set list playlist that we have on our Spotify profile. And with that, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for listening and watching. We appreciate you. We do. We really do. See you at the road. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the MIA 2K podcast. We have lots of great content coming up ahead. So please don't forget to follow and subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you enjoyed our episodes, please rate us five stars. And for the real time tea, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook by searching for at MIA 2K podcast. Dale. Bye.